What's happening everyone? I've got a hankering for pasta and I bet you do too. So today I'm going to show you five tips to making great delicious homemade pasta. Although a disclaimer if I may, I'm not actually an expert in making pasta, but I have dabbled in the mystical arts of pasta making with some success. So I'm going to share a bit of my experience and maybe we'll learn a little bit together as well. So stick with me and we'll see if we can't get this done. I've tried many recipes and they never seem to come out the way that I think homemade pasta should be. So today I'm going to make an attempt to rectify that. So tip number one, how to get the right consistency. Some common problems people encounter, I know I certainly have, when making homemade pasta is either not enough liquid or too much, which can result in a sticky dough that's difficult to work with or a dry dough that's difficult to roll out. I think one of the mistakes I've been making is not enough liquid or rather not enough eggs and oil. My go-to recipe or ratio for pasta dough has been one cup of flour to one egg and one or two tablespoons of water. While this has resulted in satisfactory pasta in the past, I want to push the envelope today and attempt something more decadent. That and we're going to double the recipe for some guests this evening. So that will be two cups of flour, three eggs, a tablespoon of olive oil, and probably about three to four tablespoons of water. The reason the water varies is really just depends on how the planets happen to align that day. Phenomenal cosmic power! or rather the humidity, the temperature, and so on. So just start a little bit at a time and add more as needed. For today's application, I wanted to do something different than your ordinary cream or red sauce. And I saw a recipe the other day for uh, roasted red pepper dipping sauce for a crostini. And I thought, why not a red pepper cream sauce? And I always feel like I need a protein instead of just empty carbs. That way I just feel less guilty. So we're also going to pan sear some chicken breasts we're gonna to top everything off with some pecorino romano and some chopped parsley. If you've got a helper, you can maybe have them start on the red peppers, which means preheating the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, dicing the peppers into four pieces each, and then placing them skin side up on a baking sheet with some parchment paper. I tried this technique on another video I did and the pepper stuck to the baking sheet. If you do try this, just make sure you use parchment paper to avoid sticking. Okay, back to pasta. This can take some experience to gain some intuition, but basically you want to keep combining the dough until it comes together, which should be a fairly intuitive description, but it might take you a few times to determine exactly what that means for you. And this is tip number two, don't over knead the dough. If you're looking for that delectable texture and mouthfeel, why is that a phrase associated with food? It's weird and creepy. You want to knead it just until it's smooth, typically around five minutes, but certainly no more than 10. Now you need to let it rest which will also aid in attaining the texture you're looking for. If you're gonna use it right away, wrap it up in some plastic or cover it with a damp towel to keep it from drying out. Otherwise, wrap it up, put it in a bag, Tupperware, and place it in the fridge. You wanna let it rest for a minimum of 30 minutes. If you do refrigerate it, just make sure you let it come to room temp before rolling it out, which we'll come back to. Now we're gonna get those peppers in the oven so we can start on the sauce. I roasted these about 25 minutes, turning the pan at the 15 minute mark. I think this is fairly well known, but once they're done, you want to cover them so that they steam to help loosen up the skins. I don't think there's necessarily a wrong way to do this. I typically place them on a plate and cover with a large bowl. Lots of recipes call for Tupperware or a zip top bag. Today, I'm just going to use a bowl and our reusable covers. Okay, I'm going to say something that's probably not terribly popular. Removing the skins isn't absolutely necessary. But if you don't remove them, they tend to fall off and curl up into little bits and whatever you're cooking. It's just not visibly appealing and they can add some bitterness. But depending on how long you cook them, how long you let them steam, the skins may fall off easily, like so. Or you may battle with it for a while. And if that's the case, you know, just throw them all in the blender and call it a day. No judgment. But I think one of the more important aspects of letting the pepper steam is allowing those juices to rest and pool. Make sure you reserve that sauce and, and include it whenever you are. There's a ton of flavor there. Now we're going to puree the peppers with just a splash of water to aid the puree action. I'm not quite ready to start the sauce, so I'm going to start this in a bowl and set it aside for now. I really want to infuse some flavor, so I'm going to dice four garlic cloves and we'll saute those a bit for the base of the sauce. In addition, I'll chop some parsley and prepare the chicken breasts as well. All right, everyone, we're nearing the home stretch. Are you still with me? Yeah, you, I'm talking to you. This is my opinion on rolling pasta. You can absolutely do this by hand. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy an expensive contraption, especially if this is your first time. 
However, it can be difficult to roll out by hand and thin enough for your liking. I suggest you do your best and get it as thin as you can and be happy with it. Or as my wife likes to say, get over it. You can purchase a relatively inexpensive hand crank that attaches to the side of your counter. These are very easy to do and can save you a ton of time if you're looking to do a lot of pasta. That said, we happen to have a KitchenAid stand mixer. So we splurged for the pasta roller attachment after having tried some of these other options. Which brings us to tip number three, do what works best for you and your budget. One of the reasons we let the pasta rest is that we're going to give it a second kneading, or rather the machine is. You want to roll the pasta through the thickest setting a few times, folding it onto itself each time will add some additional gluten and better texture. Then you just roll it through on subsequent thinner settings until it reaches the thick or thinness or girth that you like. This attachment has eight settings, eight being the thinnest, I used level six. Just keep in mind that the pasta will expand when you cook it. If you're well organized and plan things out, you probably started boiling water some time ago. I, however, am not the most well organized person and therefore I got so wrapped up into filming this episode and making pasta that I forgot to boil water. So we're gonna start that now and you can all benefit from the magic of video editing. Just make sure to use a lot of water to ensure the pasta gets cooked thoroughly and evenly. And of course, don't forget to salt the water beforehand about two to three tablespoons. And whatever you do, make sure you have the rest of the ingredients ready when you throw the pasta in the water. That said, we're going to start on the sauce, which brings us to tip number four. Don't be intimidated. This sauce or other cream sauces might seem intimidating, but it's really not that hard. It just takes a bit of planning and some simple steps to follow. Most sauces begin with a base, which is where a lot of the flavor starts. Then you add some liquid to thin it out and increase the volume and then some additional liquid for texture and more flavor. We'll start with searing the chicken so we can deglaze all those tasty bits for the sauce. Remove the chicken, add some butter and garlic, don't let it burn, and then deglaze with some wine. I used rosé because that's what we had in the fridge, but most white wines will work nicely, either a Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio. Now you can add the pepper puree. Let that simmer for a few minutes and then add a bit of chicken stock for flavor and to thin it out, and increase the volume. Let this simmer and reduce for about 10 to 15 minutes and then add the heavy cream, about one cup. If you've watched some of my other episodes, you know that I'm not the best measurer and I typically just eyeball things based on how it looks and a little bit of intuition. Stir to combine and let this simmer for another five to 10 minutes. Add salt and pepper to taste. All right, folks, here we go. Pasta time. And last but not least, tip number five. Don't overcook the pasta. Fresh pasta doesn't require as long as a cook time as its dry box relatives. I generally cook it about half the time I would a dry box pasta, which generally speaking is about six minutes. But this will also get cooked a bit in our sauce, so I'm going to reduce that to four minutes. I like to use a colander setup like this so I can reserve the pasta water. This is key to a good authentic sauce. So we'll drain the pasta, add it to the sauce. You don't need to cook this very long, just another one to two minutes to ensure the pasta gets coated and infused thoroughly. Remove it from the heat, and top it with some sliced chicken breasts, cheese, and some basil. And voila, you've got yourself a unique, homemade, decadent dish. I love making pasta from scratch, and it's something that you can list to your kids or uh, enjoy with the whole family. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more delicious recipes and fun cooking tips. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. And the pepper stuck to the baking shit. I mean, so if you do do this, I said do do. And the pepper stuck to the baking sheet. Baking shit. <laughs> baking sheet. <laughs>